Hello there and welcome once again to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City, and this is our program for January 2018. Hope you survived the holidays and are ready to make this a great year. In our first segment, we're going to get to know Jennifer Like. She is a supervisor over at the Oklahoma City County Health Department. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You've got a wonderful new program that has to do with losing weight and no better time to think about weight loss than January. Yes, many people's New Year's resolutions are to lose weight in the new year, but only about 20% of people are actually going to achieve that New Year's resolution. So one thing you can do to help better make sure you make meet that goal is to join us in our free total wellness program. Now tell me about that. It is a free eight week weight loss and chronic disease prevention program. The program just meets for one hour a week for eight weeks. We talk about everything from nutrition to physical activity to making healthy lifestyle changes. And uh, are there resource opportunities there for exercise? And, mm -hmm. and, and So while we don't exercise during the class itself, we encourage people to do 150 minutes. That's two and a half hours of physical activity outside of class time. And we help you get there by after class each week. We'll stay after and do about a 20-minute group exercise okay. together. And that 250 minutes, that per week? 150 minutes per week. Right. Mm -hmm. 150 minutes per week. Do you also recommend having a Fitbit like, like Fitbit, this? Any type of um, pedometer or tracking oh. advice is going to be a great motivator to get you to move more, but it doesn't mean you have to have one. Right. Um, a lot of our smartphones already have a pedometer tracking device on them, or you could yeah. download one. Um, and then, But there's nothing wrong with those fitness devices. I like that they track sleep and lots of other things too. So what would we learn if we showed up at one of these one-hour courses? Well, many people know we should eat better and exercise more. We're just not quite sure why we're not doing those things in our <laughs> lives. And so the class really helps you walk through that process. What are your individual barriers to eating healthier and exercising? And then how do you problem solve on those barriers so you can be healthier? What if someone says, Everybody in my family's overweight, so I'm going to be overweight too. And there are lots of people that way, but that doesn't have to be your destiny. You can, you may not be stick thin, but mm -hmm. you can be healthier. So the number on the scale isn't always the best determinant of how healthy we are as a person. Um, our cholesterol levels, triglyceride, blood pressure, and glucose are all better indicators. And so we track those week one and week eight and help people improve their labs so they can reduce their risk for diabetes and heart disease. A lot of people are in a hurry. It's so easy to stop and get fast food or to yes. get food that's prepared quickly. Sometimes it might even taste better. What's your response to, to that? You can still do those things. It's about mm -hmm. making those healthy choices while you're there. So you can always grab a smaller hamburger instead mm -hmm. of the big giant hamburger. Mm -hmm. Get a kid's meal instead of the full on combo and don't supersize. Yeah. Um, it's just as quick to run into the grocery store and grab a bag of salad and a rotisserie chicken as it is to sit in the drive through and get a combo mm -hmm. meal. So you could actually get quite a few meals for less money to going to the grocery store versus going to a fast food restaurant. What if you have a young person in, in your life that seems like they might be developing the early signs of a weight problem? What should you do there? If we're, if we're talking about a, a five-year-old or a six-year-old or someone who's in, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to encourage children to diet. We don't want to get them with that weight obsession so early early in life. Really, because a lot of they're still growing and they're going to grow out of it. And so offering healthy choice is the best thing. Being a good role model for those children and having you yourself, the parents or the, the caregivers, have eating vegetables and having right. smaller portion sizes. One of the things that we really work on with my kids is taking time, instead of inhaling all your food, taking a slow down and talking and having a conversation during dinner. So it's not all about how fast can I get this food in my mouth. Mm -hmm. It's about enjoying the food and the conversation. Yeah. Do you recommend that people snack while they eat television? I mean, while they eat, while they watch <laughs> television? No. <laughs> and so uh, being very mindful of what you're eating and when you're eating is very important. So when you're sitting in front of TV or when you're driving down the road, you can only be paying attention to one thing at a time. And so really only eating when you can focus on the food in front of you is a very great way to limit your portion sizes and eat less food. It sounds like one of the things you're talking about with these classes is 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 realizing that it's it's uh, it's easier to do things when you're with other people and you have a support group around you. It is a great support system because everyone in the room has, has the same goals that you do and so you get to hear what they're doing and what works mm -hmm. for them and then you can implement some of those practices in your own life. It's a uh, is there beyond the, the pounds, are there other parts of this course that, that people should take heed to? 
Um, yes, so we talk about nutrition and physical activity. We've developed what's called the Oklahoma Pick Your Plate Method and how you should be dividing your food. There's no counting, there's no weighing, there's no measuring. It's all a visualization of how you should fill your plate at each meal. So that's a great component that we have in the class. We also do the physical activity component, but we also do one thing, it's called the Wheel of Total Wellness. And there's 10 spokes on our wheel. It's not just about nutrition and activity. It's about stress, mm -hmm. it's about sleep, it's about lifestyle style activity, parking your car further away from the store entrance instead of trying to drive around to get the closest spot. All those things, medication compliance, taking the medication that your doctor prescribes, finding some pleasure in your life, enjoying what you're doing and who you're doing it with instead of listening to all that stress and letting that weigh you down. We're going to give some contact information in just a few moments about how you can particularly sign up for these programs by mail or a telephone number or going online. But first, I want to ask you how many people are coming and have you have any results yet to, to talk about? So we have been doing this program now. We just finished up our 10th year of offering the program. And in those 10 years, we've had 8,000 people come through the program, lose about 27,000 pounds. So we are helping those the Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County take off those pounds. That's terrific. Okay. During, with our lab work, um, we have about 65% of the people who start the program with elevated labs will lower their labs by 3 to 5% or more through the program. That's great. Yes. Well, let's talk about then uh, the, these contact information. Do, do you remember the telephone? Number? Yes, uh -huh. okay. so if you want to get signed up, you can give us a call. Our phone number is area code 405-425-4422. Okay. Or you can email us. Our email address is totalwellness at occhd.org. Or you can just go online. Our website is occhd.org slash lose. And you can get signed up for any of our 10 locations right there on our website. All right. And Jennifer, where are you located in case people want to know where they're going to have to go to go to these classes? Um, we offer classes all over the Oklahoma City metro. And we have daytime, evening, and even a Saturday class available starting in January. All so right. get signed up now. All right. So it's, it's January and time to start thinking about having a healthier year in 2018. Yes. Be thinking about getting your entire family involved as well and uh, you know it's contagious uh, i've heard a lot of in, uh, anecdotal stories about one person starting to take on a healthier lifestyle and losing some weight and before you know it the whole family was was involved so think about that for your family in 2018 she gave you the email the uh, website and the phone number to call we've had that on your screen as well i want to thank jennifer like for coming on our show and telling us about all these great programs thank you so much for having me oklahoma city county Health Department does so many wonderful things, and we are appreciative of Jennifer and the other workers over there. We'll have more on the Mayor's Magazine right after this. Con free niet. Con free niet. It's the harmonious marriage of free and convenient. And it's the perfect word to describe the mobile app from Oklahoma City Utilities Customer Service Division. Download it free today and manage your OKC Utility account on the go. You can check your bill on your smartphone or device and pay your bill on the run, anywhere, anytime. Free app, convenient access. It doesn't get more convenient than that. Download the OKC Utilities app today. The convenient way to manage your Oklahoma City Utility account. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City, and in this segment, we're going to talk once again with Kim Garrett. She's with Palomar, which is the Family Justice Center. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. Thank you for having me. You and the other people that work at the Family Justice Center are doing such a wonderful service for our community and that you're, you're offering resources for people who might have run into domestic problems inside the home. You want to expand on the, the type of resources and those that might be able to draw from your services? Sure. So Palomar is a one-stop shop where we co-locate we actually have 26 partners now on site that um, work together to help victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, elder abuse, and children exposed to those crimes. And so if, if 
people are having issues with a spouse or, or someone inside uh, their, their home that they've invited in or not, but it's starting to create a problem, uh, it's, it's probably best to, to check in with you guys earlier rather than later? Absolutely. Our goal is to intervene earlier so these families aren't um, having to be arrested so the violence isn't escalating. Our long-term goal is breaking cycles of generational mm -hmm. violence. We know that there is a profound number of children experiencing and witnessing violence in Oklahoma City. And I think it's really important to note that it's not those people. There's a stereotype that is common that I hear in the community of it's people that look different than them, that have different socioeconomic backgrounds or dif different ethnicities. And the reality is violence does not discriminate. We are really proud to serve all walks of life at, Oklahoma, at Palomar. And we um, have anything from 90 year old men seeking services to teenagers. Um, every ethnicity you can think of, every ability you can think of. It's something we're really proud of is that we serve our community and we know it doesn't discriminate. One of the, I think, achievements of, of Palomar and the work that you've done is that you've got so many agencies working together. Can you discuss a little bit about the coordination of the effort? Absolutely. So this was years of planning and research and strategic development. Um, I'm so thankful for Chief City and Oklahoma City Police Department for helping us um, develop this momentum of where we worked together for years and brought people together um, and got past our silos and our own agendas and our concerns and fears to really work together for the greater good of clients. Um, we've already served 6,000 clients, adults, that's not including 800 children. Um, we've been very busy. We did not anticipate this type of demand and it's only growing. You know, maybe someone's seen a growing problem and, and maybe they're looking here in January of the year thinking to themselves, I don't know if I want to go through another year of this. Are there resources available that can start with some counseling that might be able to, to head off a problem before it gets further down the road? So anybody is welcome to come into Palomar uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and they can come in and not even need to file a police report or not sure what they want to do, but they know that what's happening isn't right, maybe they just need help, they wanna know what their options are and they will be met by a client navigator who's specially trained in trauma um, to walk them through the process, explain to them their rights, the options that they have, the agencies that are available at Palomar and how we can wrap around them and, and support them to get the help they need. I know one of the efforts we've had is getting our own police department to be more aware of the opportunities that are available and how to deal with situations in the field when they run into situations where they think there might be some level of abuse going on. Yes, um, actually Oklahoma State Police Department just did an in-service and trained all of their police officers, detectives, in command on um, domestic violence, strangulation. We have a high prevalence of strangulation in Oklahoma City. We also know it's a potential lethality for um, homicide. And so it's really important that we can identify and intervene on those cases so it doesn't end up lethal. Um, so we've done a lot of training officers, trained other officers on how to intervene and we're receiving a lot of referrals as a result. You know, one of the first things that happens when you, you start working on awareness and, and getting people trained is that the number of calls is likely to go up because suddenly things that might have gone on and been let go in the past are suddenly drawn to the attention of, of law enforcement and other counselors that can be a help. Absolutely. I think the more the awareness gets out, obviously our numbers will increase, but I think the more that leaders are stepping up and having these tough conversations that people are realizing that it's not this secret the stigmatized thing and that they're getting access to resources, um, I think we're just gonna continue to see referrals increase. And uh, funding is always an issue, I know. So what, what are the sources that are out there that you and the other people that believe in Palomar and are working on it can tap into? So we work with federal grants, um, state, city funding. We look for foundations, private donors, things like that. The reality is, this is a public health issue, this is a public safety issue, and it's really gonna take everybody pulling on the same side of the rope if we wanna see a difference mm -hmm. in the outcomes in our community. I think Oklahomans want a safer community. They don't really know exactly how to achieve that. It's, this can sometimes seem overwhelming and scary, but the reality is like, there's a lot of families that are hurting a lot of children, and we've gotta wrap around them, and we've gotta break the cycles of generational violence if we want a better Oklahoma City. This is a national issue. How would you compare our efforts with other cities? What can we learn from them? What can they learn from our efforts? Well, historically, our rates are not good in Oklahoma City. Um, we consistently rank as one of the highest states for women killed by men in single homicide incidents. 
Um, if you look at the map for calls for service, we've got 35,000 calls that are domestic related annually, which is the equivalent of filling Chesapeake Arena twice. Um, so we've got staggering rates, um, but we also have some innovative programs. Um, our Palomar Family Justice Center has actually received national recognition. Um, we are leading the other states as far as our coordinated response and our collaboration, and people are looking at us in development of future um, facilities, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about criminal justice reform. Are those parallel issues, or do you see some overlap between criminal justice reform and what you're doing at Palomar? There is certainly some overlap. Um, I think it's no secret that a lot of people know that what we're doing isn't working. If people get arrested, it is a temporary fix. They often get out and commit the same offense. I think we can all agree we want like violence to stop, recidivism to stop, so it's time to look at uh, methods that work, interventions that have uh, measurable outcomes and data that's supportive. And I'm excited for our future. I certainly believe in offender accountability and, um, and how we can work that in together so it works for families. Mm -hmm. um, how are we doing on, on training and you know, getting out in the community, talking to, to employers and employees and out in our schools to talk to children about these issues? Well, I can say historically prevention is underfunded at a federal and state level, um, usually because budgets are, are struggling and so they'll, <laughs> they'll cut that first. Um, we could certainly use more prevention in schools. Um, bystander approaches, things like that are really helpful and also intervention for adults too. I think we assume that people become adults and they know how to communicate healthy. They know how to um, not use violence, you know, things like that, and that's not always the case. How are we doing on um, on, on awareness in general? Are, are people having a growing awareness that this is an issue and willing to step out and, and uh, report something that they see or hear? Absolutely. I think in the last few months um, it's provoked a lot of conversation that has not been had about um, sexual harassment, sexual assault, domestic violence, things like that. When you see um, celebrities coming forward, when you see politicians and things like that um, being accused and being confronted when you see the movement that's happening I really believe it's a tipping point um, one of my favorite mentors Jackson Katz actually says that when there's accountability and society says no more and there's social stigma associated with bad behavior you will see a radical diminution mm -hmm. of this type of behavior and I believe this is what's happening is people are coming forward and saying no more and you're going to see a lot of change. Higher standards. Absolutely. That's right. Kim Garrett, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate Kim, it. Kim's over at, at Palomar, and she's doing incredible work with the Family Justice Center. The phone number, if you'd like more information on her efforts, 552-1010, 552-1010. Palomar is located at 1140 North Hudson. They have a tremendous amount of resources over there, and, of course, the Oklahoma City Police Department is directly involved. Thanks so much. We'll have another segment of the Mayor's Magazine right after this. At Embark, we're not just stops on a map or a collection of random people. We are a community connected. It gets me from my place to my evening shifts. And I'm just now getting back on my feet, so it's really nice to have this option. Since I usually don't get off till around 11, having this late night route is really a stress reliever for me. Between my job and taking classes, this route just works easier for me. Sometimes I even get all my homework finished up. The free Wi-Fi helps too. So I love it that I'm able to maintain my independence and get out and shop and do the things I love to do. Our choices on where to live, work, learn, meet, and play grow with the connections we create. And with strong connections come economic opportunities and vibrant communities. Where public transit goes, community grows. Plan your journey at EmbarkOK.com. If one word could describe auto bill pay from Oklahoma City Utilities Customer Service Division, it would be... Simplomatic. Because auto bill pay makes it simple to schedule automatic payments for your utility bill. And that's simply Simplomatic. Go to OKC.gov and click Online Payments to schedule payments from your bank account. And boom, your bill gets paid automatically, on time, every time, month after month. You can review bills on your computer or smart device and set limits to avoid overdrafts. 
With auto bill pay, worrying about utility bills is a thing of the past. Visit OKC.gov today and sign up for auto bill pay, the simplematic way to pay your utility bill. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. In this segment, we're going to visit with Jeff Provine. He is the publisher of Oki Comics. Welcome back. Hey, great to be here. Now, this is a, a very interesting idea. So this yeah. is issue number one. Issue one, yep. yeah. And it's uh, it's Oki Comics, but it's so it's a, like a localized comic. But you're into your comic book, but you're much more into the artist behind the the images than you are in trying to make a living selling magazines. I'm guessing. Right. Which ideally we can make living's doing art. Uh, mm -hmm. But the idea for this came from 2015 when I did a teen program with a pioneer library system. Went to all these different uh, rural libraries and talked to teens about how to make comics. And time and time again, I was just blown away with how much talent is just latent right here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since I've been thinking, we got to do something with this. We got to be able to get this out here. Uh, and uh, months and months later, it finally dawned on me that, hey, you know, looking at these uh, magazine rates for uh, free magazine distribution that we have around the city, that's well, pretty much like a, a mm -hmm. comic rate. So yeah. why not just have a magazine that's comics? You would think, uh, or one could think, that with all the technology advances and how times change, that, you know, comic books might be yesterday's news or that today's generation wouldn't be as enthused. But not so. In fact, they're probably more enthused than ever. Oh, absolutely. I think especially as we get into more of a, a visual reality, the medium's becoming stronger and stronger. Not to mention the popularity of you know Captain America and all the mm -hmm. X Men movies and yeah superheroes uh, are oh, seem yeah. to be the the most fascinating topic of, of comics is that true? Oh yeah, especially here in America, which uh, I teach a history of comic books course down at OU, and we have probably two thirds of the class dedicated to just talking about superheroes and and where they are. When really worldwide, that's kind of just a small sliver of the overall Interesting. genre. So the rest of the world, what are they interested in? Uh, they like uh, lots of science fiction, uh, lots of fantasy, uh, lots of romance stories, uh, lots and lots of uh, nonfiction, which we've had here a little bit back in the like, 1950s and 60s. Uh, but really, comics have just always turned toward these superheroes. Mm -hmm. Now, th the way that people draw, you know, can be on a, uh, you know, some mm -hmm. sort of tablet or a, a lot of other uh, medium. So that's changed. How is how is comics adapted to the fact that it doesn't have to be a pencil and paper anymore? Uh, I think that's really making it take off. Because it used to be you'd have to buy you know the big 11 by 17 sheets, and if you want to do some art, it's going to cost you. But now you get your tablet for one purchase, and now you can draw as much as you like. And that's really opened the door for lots of people who otherwise wouldn't be able to get into it uh, to just create and create, create. So when, you're, when you are deal with your students, are you helping them with their art? Are you helping them with their storyline? What's, what's the teaching process back and forth? Uh, so I come at it from the writer's side. I'm, I'm not a, a super great artist. That's, that's fortunately bringing in lots of talent from other folks. Uh, but I focus on comics as stories in pictures. Mm -hmm. So you talk about the characters, the plots, the settings. And the key for Okie Comics is the setting is always going to be Oklahoma. It's always local. And how many students do you have at your different uh, classes? So we usually average about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their age, are they, are they boys, girls, men, women? What, uh, what's, we're who's usually coming? a little bit higher on the male side, but uh, it, it's a little bit stronger on females. And typically, uh, I'd say 18, 19 altogether. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there, are there uh, people in Oklahoma that are making their living uh, writing and, and drawing these, these types of serials? Absolutely. Uh, Jerry Bennett, for example, he's a, a great hometown hero of comics. Uh, he got started just designing t-shirts and, and making pop culture references and from there it's exploded into a whole uh, realm of storyboards and making his own comics and, and now contributing to Okie Comics mm -hmm. with a, a weird west about cowboys fighting a pterodactyl out on the Chisholm Trail. And is it easier to get things published today just because of the, of the advances in digital technology? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it used to be you'd have a whole crew of people specifically designed to uh, set up what the pages are going to look like and all this. Now one person with uh, Adobe mm -hmm. can lay everything out and ship it off to the printer. Is, is there a likelihood that some people are good at, at writing the stories and some people are good at, at drawing the the, the, the the, the, the captions. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. the, and is there that you match people up that they can get together? Yeah, yeah that's the key. They're whole different uh, story sets. There are a few people historically, like uh, Jack Kirby, who can you know, make the story and the art at the same time. But usually you got to work from that script first. So you get the writers together and they, they put the story together. And then uh, they pass that off and you get a whole new vision of it from the artists. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know, I was a kid, they cost a dime, sometimes 12 cents, and you get a double issue for a quarter sometimes. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, those are big <laughs> and thick. But I'm assuming they must cost a lot more today. Yeah, comics today are running you three fifty, four dollars, uh, sometimes seven dollars if it's one of the really uh, ones people want. We're going on a free business model. We're we're going to pay for by advertising, and so uh, we're distributing thirty thousand copies all over the metro area for free, as well as our online delivery. Yeah. I'm guessing that if if someone is spending their spare time just drawing and and doodling and and drawing superheroes, you're going to say that's not a waste of time. That's actually very, very smart and heading in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which, uh, in addition to just uh, being fun, it's therapeutic. It's something that you can actually uh, feel better about yourself and look back on progress from where you've been just a few months ago to where you are today. Uh, and I'm all about what have I created? What's the story behind it? What, right. What's something I can tell somebody about that's interesting? Most, most of the times you think of comics, you're thinking very short stories. Mm -hmm. Are there long stories? Are there, there are there are there books that are animated or, or drawn and, and, oh, and turn into much longer versions? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, in our class we talk about uh, Cerebus, which is uh, some like sixteen hundred pages long, and then we get into some of the Japanese stories, which uh, the manga go for tens of thousands of pages. Mm -hmm. which is massive stories. So, should you advise someone to write for themselves or to write for a larger audience? That is the eternal question, right? Uh, I guess it depends on what you want to do. Ideally, I would say do both, right? Write, uh, practice writing for somebody else what they would want, but then also write what you want. What do you want to see? Mm -hmm. So there's strong suits on both. Do, do people usually write out of a, a world that they would like to, to be a part of, or do they write out of a fear of, uh, of, of some... Uh, uh, are they internalizing when they're when they're writing? Or, in other words, could a psychiatrist walk into this and have a field day trying to figure out why certain people draw certain <laughs> pictures? Oh, I'm sure they could. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Which uh, I, a lot of the story creation process is, you know, working your way through problems. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to you know have a world where everything's great and interesting, uh, but then it's really not interesting because there's no no conflict. But once you get into a world of conflict, you can actually see well, this is where. Uh, the true grit is inside of people and, and what they're willing to do to stand up for what's right. Have you had students that at first glance you, um, you know, wondered if they really had much talent and then once you saw their work you were just completely surprised at how talented they were? That's true. You can never tell an artist by, by looking at them. They, they can be straight laced and, and turn out amazing stuff or somebody that's uh, stereotypically long haired or whatever and mm -hmm. also turn out amazing stuff. All right, how do we get more involved in Oki Comments, Comics? Uh, check us out online at okiecomics.com. Uh, okiecomics.com, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, and we're on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, get a copy and tell us what you think about our stories. We're trying to tackle as many genres as possible. So we do have a superhero story about the Oklahoman. He's our, our hometown superhero foiling a robbery up at the, uh, the Museum of Art. Uh, but we're also doing teen mysteries, uh, Weird West, like I mentioned. Uh, we've got an uh, animal comic called uh, Zoo Oklahoma about... Uh, all the citizens of Oklahoma being buffalo and prairie dogs, and they're on the quest to figure out what's the best pizza in Oklahoma City. All right, and in this first edition, my notes here say there's a heist at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, which mm -hmm. you mentioned, mm -hmm. a history of Rose Rocks. Yeah, our nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Cowboys fighting dinosaurs, mm -hmm. and an act of kindness at the Devon Ice Rink. That's right. That's one of our very kind of artsy stories about two kids who are very excited to go and, and skate with uh, their allowances they've saved up, but then they see two other kids who uh, just don't have those allowances. It is all in choice. issue number one of Oki Comics. Comics. Jeff Provine uh, is an instructor here locally helping young people and people who want to learn more about it, learn about animation and, and, and all of the things that go with uh, comic uh, creation. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thanks for having me. All right. Oki Comics, uh, wrapping up our show here on the Mayor's Magazine. That's going to do it for this January edition. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in February with another show. At Embark, we're not just stops on a map. Between my job and taking classes, this route just works easier for me. Sometimes I even get all my homework finished up. The free Wi-Fi helps too. Where public transit goes, community grows. Plan your journey at EmbarkOK.com. I'm Lee Criswell with Street Maintenance. Help us while we repair your city streets. Please slow down and be alert in all work zones.